So in last week's episode, we went on an adventure to find the best DIY fall crafts, and we were able to find them at Hobby Lobby. If you missed that video, check that out down in my description box. But for today, we're going to be crafting with those supplies we picked up last week. So let's jump right into the DIYs. So for our first project, we're going to make a super simple sign. Now on a difficulty level, I give this a one out of five. Anyone can make this. So we picked up this plank sign. It's just a basic brown color to start with. We're going to add some burnt orange acrylic paint and cover the whole thing. Then once our paint is dried, we're going to add some distressing and we're going to use a chippy brush and we're going to add some white folk art chalk paint. If you don't know what a chippy brush is, no worries. It is a paintbrush with some coarser hair. You're going to put as little of the paint on as you can, and when you brush it over, you get the chippy look of distressed. Hence the name, a chippy brush. If you're not sure where to pick those up, I got mine on Amazon in a box that had a couple of different sizes, and I will link that down in my description box. So once we have our chippy paint on there for our white distressing, we're ready to add our sunflower. I picked up this sunflower at Hobby Lobby. It comes in a two pack. They're kind of an ornament. They have a clippy part on the back. We're going to remove the clippy part and the stem just by cutting the stem off. We're going to add some hot glue to the front and glue it on. Then to kind of give us a more high end look, we're going to take this ribbon from Hobby Lobby. We're just going to glue it to the back of our sign and then we're going to flip our sign over and add a little bit of an embellishment here to give it a even higher end look. So we're going to cut off two smaller pieces. We're going to tie two knots to make like one larger knot and then we're going to glue those to the holes that are on the front of the sign. This makes it look like we tied a knot through it and is stringing it through the holes rather than just glue Gluing it. I love to do this little detail. It just makes it so much more elevated. That is it for this simple project. Here it is styled for you guys. Let me know what you think about this one. use our wood plank sign again. This was a pretty inexpensive sign and so there is a lot of things that you can do with it. If this is something that you would like to see multiple projects of, let me know down in the comments and I could do a whole video on just this one plank sign. So we're going to cover it again with our burnt orange chalk paint and then we're going to use our same chippy brush technique and give it some distressing over the top. Once we have those two steps completed, we're ready to do our pumpkin. So I picked up this stencil at Hobby Lobby. It is actually cheaper than the Dollar Tree. It comes out to be less than $1.25 and you get two stencils. We're going to use the pumpkin one here and we're going to lay it on our side. Now this stencil fits perfectly on the sign. We're going to line it up down at the bottom for the edge of our stencil. Now this sign has some shiplap lines in it and we want to make sure that we can still see the shiplap lines after we have done our stenciling. So make sure not to get a lot of paint on your brush and not to get a lot of paint saturated into those lines. You want the lines to show. We're going to just go over our entire pumpkin, including the stem, and then we're going to let that dry. Now the key to stenciling, like I have said before, is a little paint in your brush. I use a very inexpensive stencil brush from the Dollar Tree and it works just great. The true key is less paint. So when you're stenciling, less is more. Once it's dried, we're going to add a quick shabby bow and all my ribbon here came from Hobby Lobby. I'm just going to cut two pieces of each of the ribbons and then we're going to crisscross them and then one extra third piece of our plaid ribbon and we're going to tie that off in the middle to make our bow. We're going to hot glue that to the bottom of the stem and then to add a little bit more high end uh, jazz to this sign, I took one of these beaded garlands I had over in the, I believe, kitchen area 
area or kind of where their garlands are and we're going to cut it where the tassel is. We're then going to put some hot glue on the ends of those pieces and we're going to hot glue them to the little holes at the front. Now this is going to give us the look that the beads are hanger. I don't personally hang any of my signs up. I mostly use them as shelf setters or in part of my decor. Sometimes I put them on easels but if you're going to hang this you might not want to hang it from the beads so just add a quick little hanger on the back of the sign. That is it for this one. This is again a difficulty level of one out of five. Anyone can make this sign and it's absolutely gorgeous. Let me know what you think about this one. If you've made it this far in the video, Kitty and I would love it if you hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button and become a part of my YouTube family. If you're enjoying today's video and you have made it this far, comment down below the emoji of a leaf. Now let's get back to the project. Now I love entertaining and Thanksgiving is kind of my time to shine. I do the whole dinner and I love to decorate. So I thought these really said napkin rings to me. They have a little bit of garland. They have a little hole part at the top and then they have this cute little embellished piece at the bottom. I'm going to leave the beads the natural wood color. You could paint them if you would like. I'm only going to be painting the wooden piece at the bottom. Now I picked up two of each of the shapes and we're going to color them with the pumpkin as a burnt orange, the leaf as the sage green folk art chalk paint I had, and then the acorn is just going to be a regular brown acrylic paint. Once I have that all painted on and it's dry, we're ready to do some uh, distressing and we're using our chippy brush again. We're just going to go over all the projects with the white folk art chalk paint. Once that has dried, you could totally stop here if you wanted to. I wanted to add a little bit of glam here. So I'm going to take some gold metallic paint and I'm just going to go with a smaller chippy brush all around the edges. I'm going to interject here. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention at all and I didn't notice that as I was using my smaller chippy brush around the edges that it was splattering all over. So make sure your workspace is protected and you have something down covering that and then it's not getting splattered all over something that you are worried about. Once I have the gold paint all around the edges, that is it for this project. I think they are super cute. I can't wait to use them for Thanksgiving. Let me know what you guys think and here it is styled for you. should have labeled this video difficulty level one out of five for projects but again this is another one of those projects that is a difficulty level of one this is probably the easiest project in the whole video but this came from an inspiration i saw at hobby lobby while i was picking up supplies here's the actual garland that they have on sale we can make it for cheaper even using supplies from hobby lobby so we're going to do that today we're just going to take some twine this is a little bit thicker twine than you can get at the Dollar Tree but you can also pick it up at Walmart and I'll give you an option down in the description box but you're going to cut it to the desired length that you want and then we're just going to add our leaves now my leaves came from Hobby Lobby I love these brown and blue leaves that they have there because navy is my favorite color to decorate for fall but we're just going to take these little clothespins and we're going to clip them onto our twine now I do suggest you use a medium size clothespin here because these tiny ones weren't quite big enough to get the full like sturdiness onto the twine so definitely medium size clothespins but that is it friends that's all you're gonna do you're gonna clip it onto the twine and then you are done I doubled mine up in the space that I was using it for but again this is customizable to whatever space you plan on hanging it but here it is styled for you guys let me know what you think about this one
had a viewer in a recent video ask me to do a project that they saw in the opening part of my video, and so this project is for her. Becky, I'm so excited to create this project for you. Here's her comment. She was really hoping that I could do something with this sign, so I hope I don't disappoint here, uh, but this project is for you. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to cover this whole sign with navy blue paint, and I'm going to give you guys a tip here. This sign really warrants some spray paint, I think. If you're going to color it one solid color, spray paint is the way to go here because there are so many nooks and crannies and this took me a really long time to paint. So definitely spray paint is an option for you. Spray paint this first. Once you have the like base coat on here, I can't stress enough that the base coat is the important part of this project. You're going to want to pick up the project and you're just going to kind of hold it like this and you're going to be looking like inside. There's so many crevices in there that you want to make sure that you got all the paint because it's going to be very hard to go back and cover that later and it's going to be really noticeable once we add the next color. So once you have your base coat on and you don't have any other places that you need to do touch up, we're ready to add our next color. I decided to do gold here because I was going for a more high-end look, but as I was making this project, I was thinking this would be a really cute farmhouse project too. White paint on top or even a distressing on top would look really cute. So we're going to go ahead, add our gold paint. I do have to go back and do a little bit of touch-up. Uh, a very small brush is the best way to go on this top part because my brush was more like a small medium and I did get some of the paint around the edges. So I went back and did some touch up. Then I had these gold leaves that I got at Hobby Lobby. Now these gold leaves are something like they are very bold and bright and I originally was just going to use them on their own but that was not happening. So I got out my blue and brown leaves as well. We're just going to kind of add them around here. We're going to use the sunflower. This one came in a two pack. We had already used the other one. So we're, once we have our leaves on, we're going to glue our sunflower on. We're going to add some leaves in there to make it kind of evened out. And then that is it for this project. I love how the leaves end up turning out in the end. That becomes its kind of own statement piece. And I think all together, this is really a beautiful project. Becky, I hope you're excited and you got some inspiration. Here it is styled for you guys. Let me know what you think about this one. That is it for the projects that we found this week. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you haven't seen my if the woodcrafts are worth the price video, here it is for you guys. And if you wanted to see me shopping for the supplies in today's video, check out this video right here. And as always, wherever you are in your journey is a perfect place to start. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.